Well, hello, everybody. I think people are starting to slip in here when they can. So hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Uh, thanks very much for joining us today with this presentation. Uh, this presentation will be about empathy and sales, the emotional intelligence that sells more faster. So if you'd like to take a minute and enter your name in the chat and let us know where you're coming from, that would be great. Uh, if you'd like to participate along with this, a little bit about myself. My name is Trisha Nickel and I joined KO Advantage uh, last month. So I'm pretty new here, joined as a trainer. Uh, I'm a health and wellness coach and an owner operator of a small business. I have my previous, previous position to this. I was a health and wellness specialist for 1500 employees. I have about 25 years experience in sales, uh, in healthcare, hospitality, in the retail sector, um, business to business and B2C as well. Uh, and a little tidbit about myself, I worked as a singer, fitness instructor and animator on a resort in the Bahamas. So, so who is KO Advantage Group? Well, we are the only subscription based sales training uh, for high value business to business services. And I just had Matt send me a message here. So uh, Matt is gonna be helping me navigate the chat. So I apologize. <laughs> I'm in presentation mode and he's gonna help me. So if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat and Matt will uh, grab my attention and will answer your questions. Sorry. Okay, so yes, we are the only subscription-based sales training for business to business services. Uh, and we provide relief mastering virtual selling and empowerment in cash flow predictability. Um, part of us, uh, under our umbrella, we have Sales Unicorn, and with that, uh, we, we match businesses, we find businesses for highly trained virtual sales talent. And who makes the best salespeople, introverts or extroverts? So if you'd like to participate with us in the chat, please feel free to write it in. Who do you think uh, makes the best salespeople? Uh, I think years ago, everyone would have 100% jumped in with extroverts as the answer, but now we're not so sure anymore. Um, the definition of introverts by nature is shy and, and not sharing their feelings. And extroverts um, tends to be outgoing and overly expressive, as they would say. So that's a little bit of a hint to what uh, might be, the answer might be. So ambiverts win. So if anyone said a little bit of both, that would be uh, that would be absolutely correct. So extroverts average $115 an hour and introverts 127. And the way they know this, uh, there was a gentleman by the name of Adam Grant, uh, the Wharton School, University of Pennsylvania, and he's a psychologist and a professor. And he did a little bit of a study done in a call center. And he took the extreme extroverts versus the extreme introverts and scaled them out to see who performs better. And it actually turns out that extroverts for, were viewed as being a little bit um, overconfident or maybe uh, trying to influence the decision where the ambiverts averaged $151 an hour, striking a balance between the two. So talking and listening. So how do you know someone is fully listening to you? Um, so again, if you want to participate, put that in and, and Mike, please let me know if anybody wants to participate or bring forth any answers, um, or Matt, sorry. Um, so how do we know someone's fully listening? Well, I mean, I guess you would really consider how do you show someone that you're really listening? And then that's the great way to tell how someone's listening to you. So, um, are you, are you mirroring these types of things when you're engaged in a conversation? Now, albeit it's a little bit hard in a virtual world, but are you maintaining eye contact? Are you leaning in? Are you engaging or, um, you know, participating in the conversation? So active listening really involves all of your senses. And it is just that active listening is kind of a, an act, action word. So how are you participating in the conversation? So while someone might be talking, when you're active listening, you are engaging and showing them that you're engaging. So you're listening to the words that are being said, but you're also listening to what's not being said. So many times um, with sales or without, if you're having a conversation, 
often someone might be agreeing with you, nodding their head, but really they have a glazed over look on their face. You know that they're not understanding what you're saying. And maybe they don't, uh, don't have the confidence to speak up and say, you know what, I didn't catch that. I don't understand um, or I'm not following you. So sometimes just as important to listen to what's not being said as well as what is being said. Um, listening to learn is extremely important. So I'm guilty of this. Sometimes I'm excited and I'm passionate and I'm asking questions and I ask the question and then I can't even wait for them to get their answer out because I'm already thinking of my next question. Um, and really important that you take the time and really listen for the answer that you're asking for. If it's important enough to ask the question, it's most certainly important enough for you to wait to listen to the answer. And maybe it's not going to be the answer that you're anticipating. So really important to pay attention. Um, are you clarifying or summarizing or asking questions? Uh, if you have a teenager uh, or know of a teenager and have gauged, engaged in a conversation, you know that they are the best at not active listening. And you'll often have to say to them, um, what did I just say? <laughs> Can you repeat to me what I just said? Uh, catch them on the spot and, and know that they are able to repeat to you. So if you are the active listener, to do that before someone calls you on it and to say, to summarize and to reflect and to mirror back to them what they're saying to you is a great way to show that you are active listening. And really to be present in the emotions of the speaker. So you're wanting to pay attention not only to the logic or the words that are being said, but the emotions that they evoke behind them. So someone might not come right out and say, um, you know, this, this particular thing frustrates me but they may say it in a way that indicates frustration. And those are the things that you're looking for. So we have two ears and one mouth so that we can listen twice as often as we speak. And that's super important and super true because the conversation and a big part of emotional intelligence is that you are listening, uh, listening to understand, to really truly understand what it is, the words coming out of someone's mouth. So the trouble and solution to video calls and likewise virtual selling, um, it's a little bit different in this virtual world we're, we're finding now, right? So I'm talking to you and there's very good chance that I'm not always looking directly in the camera because I might be looking at where you are on my screen and that might be different than, than where you're actually, you know, line up to my vision. Um, likewise, it can be, it can be someone, someone could be doing answering an email and they're really not paying attention to you at all. They can be completely distracted. So eye contact is not as easy as it is in person to tell, but practicing eye contact with the camera is really great if you're the speaker um, and watching for it the best you can if you if you were the one on the other end. Um, turning off your camera view, so just making sure that you're really clear and you're you know big on the screen is fantastic raising up your computer and um, and back to allow your hands to be seen. So I'm sure you've noticed I'm a hand talker. Uh, and, you know, years ago, I would think to myself, is it a bad decision to be a hand talker? Is it a bad habit that I have to fix? But to me, I find it extremely expressive. And so I use hands gestures to get across what I'm saying. So I've done a little research on it, and it's not deemed unprofessional at all. And actually, there's the research shows that it really does help to get your point across. So as the speaker, it allows you to express yourself more fully and also give the audience clues about certain things that you're talking about, right? So further directing to your point. And the other thing it does is often keeps them engaged. So there's a lot of people in the world that are, you know, squirrel. <laughs> and so sometimes if you're making a little bit of commotion in front of them, it's holding their attention a little bit longer. So what is it that we listen for? So what are you truly listening for? And again, Matt, if there's anybody that wants to participate and writes in the chat, just please let me know um, what, uh, and we can add some, add people into this conversation, but I'll carry on. What are we listening for? Well, um, we're listening for a lot of things. We're listening for emotional states primarily, um, but we're also listening for key words. So emotional states, um, being kind of the, the most important. 
are they sounding positive about it? Is this a positive experience? Are they happy to talk about it? Are they excited? Are they passionate? Are they frustrated? Or are they complacent and could care less about what you're saying? And then their keywords, how are they describing themselves, their business, their current state, or their ideal state? Um, and again, we're looking for the words that evoke emotion. So if someone is saying to you, you know, I wish I could just, or if only I could, you know, or, oh, I can't believe this is happening. Like these are the types of things we're really looking for. And if we can get them to name their emotion, or if we can name it for them and reflect it back for them, that really furthers us ahead in the understanding and their comprehension of how well we're understanding them. So what is emotional intelligence? So emotional intelligence, EI or EQ, emotional quotient, is how connected we are to ourselves, other people, and their and our emotions. So a dictionary, I looked up the dictionary meaning of emotional intelligence, and it says it's the ability to perceive, use, understand, and manage emotions. But you could kind of sum that up by saying, emotions being expressed and recognized in ourselves and in others. So I think a lot of the time when we think of the grand scheme of emotional intelligence, we think of just the other person or our ability to read the other person. But what about our ability to read ourselves? Just as important, right? Um, and it, emotional intelligence contributes higher to a person's level of success than IQ and technical skills combined. So that is huge. So I think this is kind of where the old thought process of, you know, you can't change someone's personality, but you can teach them the material type of uh, quote comes in. However, the emotional intelligence, you really can work on it and you really can build it up. So why is having a high EQ or EI important? Um, executives with higher EQ outperform their revenue targets by 15 to 20 percent. So actually, I referenced another study about this, and there is one by, it's done by Super Office, and it was done in uh, March of 2021. And they said for every additional point, percentage point of your emotional intelligence that you rated, it added $1,300 annually per emotional intelligent point. And that is huge. That turns out to be a lot of money, right? Um, and Talent Smart rates that 90% um, 90, 90 of their high performers, uh, money makers that is, uh, they have a high EQ as well. One cosmetic company that hired solely on EQ found 91% increase in their sales compared to those who were hired before. So it doesn't matter which way you cut the mustard, uh, you're always coming out ahead with more business and more money. So building high emotional intelligence. So as we said, this is a skill that you can build on, right? Now, this little pyramid was done by Daniel Goleman, and he is an author and also a, a science journalist. He kind of coined the phrase emotional intelligence when he published a book in 1995 called Emotional Intelligence. But the term has actually been around, they say, since about 1964. So there's kind there's five levels of the pyramid that he's made. We've taken four that we found important, really important out of here and try to explain them really well. So the base level of the pyramid, the very first step of emotional intelligence is self-awareness. So that's you understanding yourself. So that's me going, uh, I, I have good self-awareness. I know my strengths. I know my weaknesses. I know how I'm perceived. I know a lot about myself. And this can kind of lead to a really good level of self-confidence because if I can know myself, then at least I can go forth in the world and, uh, you know, take my talents into the world. Uh, number two, or the second stage is self-management. Now, this is really important because this comes into now I've know my strengths and my weaknesses. I know my emotions, but can I manage them? So, you know, everybody goes up and down with their emotions, right? Some more than others. And sometimes depending on what's happening in your life, you're going to be riding a bit of a roller coaster. So can you manage that? Can you really pull it in and create a nice even keel? Because if you can, then that's how you're going to establish your trustworthiness, right? That's how you're going to be able to uh, for people to know that you're stable and not a loose cannon. 
Um, and then it helps you to have your self-motivation and to stay optimistic in times of strife, right? And then we have the third level, which is social competence. And so this is the ability to empathize with others. So this is, <laughs> there's always somebody in the crowd that's like inappropriate. This is the whole social competence <laughs> part of the pyramid. So you will often go into a party or an appropriate uh, place to say something, you know, where the two things don't match. And someone will say, you know, well, they'll make a comment, there'll be crickets, nobody will be respond, there'll be some open hanging mouths. And then that person will feel like, oh, too soon, maybe it was too soon to tell that joke, maybe it was in the wrong spot. These are the Sheldon Coopers of the world, right? And then we go into the fourth stage, which is relationship management. And now if you have a good beat on one, two, and three, you know, number four takes care of itself. If you're able to have a good self-awareness, if you have emotion, um, good emotional management and you have great social competence, well, then you have the ability and the tools necessary to really manage relationships effectively. And that's the, that then means it, tra it transfers into the ability to have a powerful relationship where you can deliver some not so good news with confidence and it can come across you're a trusted person to deliver the news and you don't appear threatening or pushy or too persuasive but you've established that honesty and that trust and you're able to to take the relationship to the next level so what are the emotions that we may face in the sales process? So there's a number of uh, emotions that we may face as the buyer or the seller, right? But there's some to really be mindful of. Um, we can take insecurity, underconfidence, and fear and really package that up uh, into preparation, right? So sometimes if you're just not prepared, right? If you if you fail to prepare, you prepare to fail. If you're not prepared, then that can really, really have an effect on those three things. Where if you're on top of your game and you're ready to go, chances are it's really gonna affect those emotions. Uh, the blame game is never something that you wanna get into because it's just not effective. So whether you are the seller or the buyer, if you're the seller, you most certainly don't want to put down your uh, competitors, right? While it's tempting sometimes, I know we don't want to put them down and we don't want to, you know, push off, off, off any blame on them. Likewise, if you are the buyer, you don't want to attack your team members for any reason or throw anybody under the bus, right? So a lot of these emotions we may face in the sales process and we really have to manage them to be effective. Now, this is a great little uh, pictograph here. This is done um, by the FBI, actually. They created this, their hostage negotiation team, I guess, or crisis negotiation unit. Um, and this is how they kind of come across with empathy before rapport, and they really clearly lay it out. Now, in the good old days, sales used to focus on building rapport first. And you would know that um, kind of the aim back then would be to establish uh, maybe some commonalities, maybe you both like the same hockey team, or maybe you have something in common, or your kids play soccer together or something, or something. and that would give you some type of rapport, what you would uh, call rapport. But empathy is a little bit different. And again, if you go down to the terms to kind of describe them, you know, rapport, the, the dictionary meaning rapport is a mutual understanding where empathy is the ability to understand and share feelings. So it makes sense that you would have to develop that ability before you were able to do the rapport, right? And so I don't know if any of you have ever watched Flashpoint. It was an old Canadian show and it was about hostage negotiation negotiations, uh, like the SWAT team or whatever. And uh, the first thing that they did were, were to say like, you know, talk to me, tell me what's going on. You know, I wanna understand what's happening here. And so this is really great. They're active listening right off the hop, developing the empathy, and then that makes building the rapport so, so much more effective, right? Once they have the rapport built, they're able to influence, and then once they can influence, they can change behavior. Destination versus transportation. So this is this is such an awesome mindset that hopefully, if you're not in this mindset already, you will be after seeing this part of the presentation. So destination is very different than transportation. Your transportation is your process and your destination is where you want to go. So when you focus on taking your clients um, 
where they want to go. You're going to evoke way more emotion in that. And you really want to highlight the contrast between where they are and then where they could be with the solution or the product that you provide. So the people who do this really great are airlines, right? Because they really get you with the advertisements of Cancun or the sunny beach with the palm trees and look at you and your perfect significant other and you're having cocktails and it's wonderful and it feels so great and you just love everything about that. Now, what they're really doing, the airlines, is renting you a seat on the plane but that process is not very enjoyable because sometimes the guy beside you has stinky feet and the guy behind you has a crying baby and the lineups are crazy long and you're squinched in your, your seat and the food maybe is not great, but they're not selling you that. They're selling you where you're going to be and that is extremely effective. So if you are able as the seller to take them there with their mind and their emotions, then it's win-win. So in order to do this, you need to really truly understand your client. So what is it that they want to change? What pain will their current issue, their situation continue to cause? What does their ideal state look like and feel like? And who will they become when they get to where they want to be? So this is excellent in the terms of, if you can think even in the terms of weight loss, if you were trying to, to sell someone a diet, the process, not really awesome, right? But the outcome, when they can fit back into their, their swimsuit or they can go to their high school reunion and who will they become, who will they be? It becomes so much more than what they look like, right? It becomes how confident will they feel? How much pride will they get from it? Or what will that then, the, the um, ripple effect, what will that do as far as like them being unstoppable and what they can do? So really want to get to the nuts and bolts of why people are doing the things that they that they want to do and the solutions they're looking for. So people act on emotion and justify with logic. So this is crazy true because there are, <laughs> again, if you ever listen to a child, they completely act on emotion and they justify with logic. They do it so much so that they they drag in pieces of information to argue their point that like completely don't make sense. To them it does, but maybe to you it doesn't. Uh, so I have a great example of this. My niece wanted a kitten and uh, she was hooked, line and sinker on this kitten, of course, because kittens are adorable. And she made a PowerPoint presentation for my sister and her husband, just this little, she's like seven. She made PowerPoint. And so she just pulled out every bit of logic that she could back up her emotion of wanting this kitten so bad. The funny part is, is that this whole emotion thing worked completely hook, line and sinker for my sister and her husband, because who says no to a seven year old that is so, so adamant about something like that? They replied with a big old yes. And they ended up with two cats, not one, two kittens, um, because they they act on emotion as well. Right. And 95% of our impressions are made in the first seven seconds. So when you are appealing to someone, you know, it's very easy to hook them the, if, if you're going with the emotional feel. So part of the way that we are able to get to that emotional part and really dig and uncover what makes someone tick or find out their whys and such is to ask better questions. So open-ended questions are the key. Open-ended questions are who, what, where, when, how. Close-ended questions um, give you a yes or a no answer. So we are, now there is a place for close-ended questions, but most of the time, especially in the beginning of the sales process, we are trying to get more information. We are trying to fill in the missing pieces. We're trying to, we're trying to build a story here. We want to know who they are and what makes them tick, and we want to know what makes them hurt so that we can fix it, right? Um, so asking open-ended questions will always be a huge part of, of you uncovering that. So what types of questions do you ask? If you have any questions that you want to share with us and put in the chat, feel free to do that. So examples of the questions. So again, this is kind of where we contrast the way you can ask a question. So you have logic questions like what is not working about your current state? And that's very much looking for the nuts and bolts, the um, bullets of information, right? But then you get into the emotional questions. Uh, what do you feel 
um, when you're in your current state, right? Or what, or how do you feel when your current state, uh, when you're in your current state, what about it's not working? How does that make you feel? So you can take the logic question and get the nuts and bolts, or you can take it one step further and really get to the bottom of how that's making them feel because the emotion behind uh, the the action or, or or the outcome is what's often driving their decision to make the change, right? And you can say, you know, what else would you like to see? Uh, and you can also say, who would you like to become in your hidden or in your ideal state? So what is your, like, what's your be all and end all? Like, what are, what, what are you really truly looking for? It's not just, uh, it's not just this one thing you want to end up, you know, with the bigger picture. So asking stronger questions. So this pyramid is kind of like three stages to climb your questions. And I actually think the number one should be on the bottom and two and three. But for, <laughs> anyways, we'll start with the bottom. And the bottom is the look and think. And again, that is the, the logic questions and the understanding. That's the nuts and the bolts. That's the pieces of information. Those are your bullet points, right? What do you think? You take it one step further and you move into the emotional pull of things. Now you're getting a little bit further to the nitty gritty. How are they feeling about this? How, you know, what's their gut on it? And, and really kind of evoke that kind of feeling into the conversation. And then once you've established that, you can take it to the B questions, which sometimes touch on something deeper. Like I use the example of weight loss. Sometimes, um, you know, that to me is just the easiest one to to um, to look at because it tends to be not really about the weight but the confidence that comes with it. So likewise with a with a business, you know, it's not always so just solving this problem. But if we solve this problem, what would that mean for us? Who could we be? Like, could we take over the world with our business? You know, and that's really getting to a deeper understanding. Sometimes it's it's just like I would feel good. I would have pride. I could really finally be proud of. X, Y, Z, right? My product, my service. Now, a great way to get yourself into the habit of asking feeling questions is to start with how are you feeling today? So it sounds a little funny if you've never done it before, but for those of you that do use how are you feeling today, as opposed to how are you, you will understand that it really makes people kind of pause and think, how am I feeling today? And it also, um, you know, kind of leads to the fact that you care, like you really want to know how they're feeling. This isn't just like a, a question you rhyme off, again, not waiting for an answer. You are asking them, how are you feeling today? So when you first start to do it, if you haven't done it already, it feels a little bit awkward, but I can assure you that the people on the other end don't think it's awkward at all. So it just allows you, if you start a conversation with that, you're already uncovering the feeling. You're already jumping up into the feeling end of things. And if you were to look back at that pyramid with the think, look, feel, and be, the higher you can get or the faster you can get up to the top of that pyramid into the be questions, you know, the more leverage you have um, into developing that trust and, you know, the hook and the sale. So would your client be willing to pay for the experience created in your sales call? Hmm, now that's a tough question. Now, I think a lot of people would answer right off the cuff, no, no, they wouldn't. They would only be able to pay for my service or my product. But I guess if we ask it a little bit differently, it would be a little bit easier to answer. Um, what is more important than money? Time. Time is more important than money. And we often look at, um, if we get ourselves a meeting um, or, or some type of an appointment with somebody, we often look at it in terms of like, we're giving our time. And we go into it thinking, you know, we may not get the sale and this is time that we might not get back. But we have to change our perception, again, incorporating emotional intelligence into their giving us their time. They could be doing a number of other things with their time and they chose to invest their time in us. And so the way we know if someone is able to pay for, willing to pay for the experience created in the sales call is if they'll book another call with you. So if they're willing to, they've taken the initial time and they've invested it in you and then now you've asked for more of their time because you want to take the process further and they invest their time again in you, that's as good as money. 
So 95% of purchase decisions take place subconsciously. So a lot of, this has so much to do with emotional intelligence. This has so much to do with um, like not 100% being aware of what's happening in our mind behind the scenes, um, both in ourselves and in others. And so developing our, our um, emotional quotient or emotional uh, intelligence is really going to help with this. But this is why we delve so deeply in our program into emotional intelligence, because it is such a bigger picture. And we really like to, like our students get a lot out of this because they really get a good beat on how to connect this way and really start thinking differently. So we would love to be able to carry on this conversation with you and find out a little bit more about you and your business and what creates um, or how you could introduce emotional intelligence in your selling and close some deals faster through within 30 days. We would love that. Um, but before we do, we wanted to, I just wanted to show you a couple testimonials. Uh, we have a few people here, Anita Lee. Um, we have uh, Doug. Um, so we have a, a few really uh, happy people with our services and um, what we were able to provide to help them virtually sell. Um, this is a great one. It's like magic or something. So really people get a lot of benefit out of our program. We'd love to connect with you. We want to help you close business in the next 30 days. So if you would like to book a complimentary call and we can tell um, some, I think Matt is going to post in the link about uh, the meeting. He'll put that in the chat. And so you're welcome to, to take that and contact one of our people. And we can talk a little bit more about emotional intelligence and, um, you know, how it is that can help you, your business and your sales. So this is kind of our, uh, our, our, our go-to quote that we live by. You can have everything you want in life if you just help enough other people get what they want. Um, and so that is a, a good integral quote and we live by it. And so we hope that you take that away with you as well. So I, this is the time now that I would really like, because I haven't been able to really incorporate you into this chat very well. I would love to know now, what will you do today that will have significant impact on your business? So can you share with us in the chat what your takeaway was from today? So I'm just getting back to the chat here. Does anyone have anything that they can let us know? Um, what they can take away from today? Is anyone brave to reach out in the chat? Okay, so bear with me because I am new to this. Uh, oh, here we go. St oh, awesome. Start starting discussions with how are you feeling? Awesome, Jim. Yeah, I love that. And bear with me, folks. This is I'm new to this platform. So I'm sorry if I wasn't able to if we weren't able to jump in properly with your comments. Um, how are you feeling today? Yeah, that's awesome. I hope you take that with you, Jim. I hope you use it. I my life changed when I started incorporating that into my life. Um, make sure that my salespeople listen. <laughs> yeah, you may have it. Uh, you may be a little bit challenged with that, but I think that if you are actively listening, you're going to get a really good beat on who's listening and who's not. Um, the increase in results driven by emotional intelligence. Absolutely, Mike. I mean, there's a huge uh, return on investment within emotional intelligence, 100%. I'm just going to pause here. I see a question and answer. Thanks. Uh, when you have client who event don't want to listen to you how can you bring his attention on what you say okay so when you have a client at an event who doesn't seem to be listening to you how can you bring his attention on what you're saying okay well i guess it would depend on um i guess what platform you're on like if you're on a uh on a Zoom call or a virtual event, or even in person, I suppose you can kind of sort them out and kind of call on them for a question. So if you kind of think back to your school days, you know, when you weren't paying attention in class, your teacher, that's the time your teacher usually called on you for an answer. So I guess if you were comfortable enough on your feet to kind of pause in your presentation and ask a question, you could call on the person who wasn't engaging in you. And then that way, um, you would be able to kind of get their, you know, 
get their attention back again, right? And really kind of incorporate them into the into the conversation. That's probably how I would do it. Um, got another one here. What do you do when the client really? What do you do when the client really doesn't want to involve with you on an emotional level? He or she just wants to know what the price is, and after that, will make his or her decision based on what's next. Okay, so that's a really good question, Vola. Um, again, I think this is going to vary a little bit in from industry to industry. However, I think for the most part, you have to give them a little bit of what they're looking for. Uh, some people are just like that. They want to know bare bones. They want to know what they're dealing with. They want to they want to get to the dollars and the cents right away. So you might have to give them a little bit of that. I would probably start to ask them a few more questions. If you can engage them in the conversation a little bit more, you can try to add value to what you're selling. So part of creating value is to really get them engaged. If they're going to jump ahead and kind of force your hand ahead right into like, give me the dollars and cents, give me the dollars and cents, give me the answer, give me the answer. You know, that's difficult for you. But as if you are able to tap into kind of your negotiating skills, just like we talked about the empathy and rapport and engage them in a conversation and really trying to get their feedback, I think you might find that you can strike a happy medium or a happy balance with that. So I hope that answered the question. Um, let's see, just going back to the chat here. Um, thank you for your time. And it, okay, so focus more on destination rather than transportation. Absolutely, Nicole. Focusing more on the destination rather than the transportation because it's awesome, and you will think airplane probably forever in your in your mind now because they do such a good job of it. Uh, and Greg, I have my own online event tonight, and I will definitely start by saying thank you for your time and for attending. Yes, and I hope, Greg, I hope that I said that at the beginning of the mind because I surely was feeling it, and I was so happy that everybody um, took the time, take their valuable time to attend today. I love that all of you, thank you for your participation, thank you for your questions, and thank you for your time just to listen to this, and um, we'd love to get to know you better, and we're happy that uh, if you could, whatever you could take away from today and uh, make it your own and, and really incorporate it into your selling, uh, we know that you'll have uh, the great results that, that all our students have. Does so anybody else have any other questions or anything else they'd like to discuss? Or have I missed anything? Matt, have I missed anything? Oh, you're welcome, Valerie. Okay. Anything? I couldn't really hear you there, Mike. I saw you pop in, but I couldn't hear what you said. But I think that we, I think I've covered everything. So thank you for sharing. Thank you for attending. Um, I'm happy that you all attended. And thank you for my first experience uh, delivering a webinar. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope we get to talk to you more soon. And Matt, again, will put that link in um, to um, put the link in to help you um, connect with us if you'd like. And also, if you wanted, um, a copy of the slide deck you can include that in the in the chat we'll we'll gladly give that to you as well and just to let you know we do have another event next week it is wind down wednesday where we all get together and kind of um you know take some time to kick back and relax and share some experience and uh, experiences and you can even talk a little further about um, how you put some of this great stuff um to good use so um yeah, so we hope to see you next week and in, in our future events. Uh, would love a copy of the slide deck. Awesome. Okay. So I think it's going to be in the chat here. So the chat's going to remain open. Oh, see, Matt's on top of it. Matt's going to give you guys the slide deck and the link to hang out is in there as well. You're very welcome, Greg. Yep. Very welcome. Awesome. Well, thanks very much, everybody. I hope you have a great day. Take care. You're welcome, Brooke. You're welcome, Faye. You're welcome, Jim. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Bye for now. <laughs>